The restoration of Antonov 225. The Antonov 225 is a strategic airlift cargo aircraft designed and built by the Antonov Design Bureau in Ukraine in the late 1980s. It was originally designed to transport the Soviet Union's Buran Space Shuttle and is the largest aircraft in the world. In today's video, we will discover the original construction of the Antonov 225, the destruction of Antonov 225 in Ukraine, and the plans for rebuilding and restoring it. The Antonov AN-225 Emria was a strategic airlift cargo aircraft designed and produced by the Antonov Design Bureau in the Soviet Union. It was originally developed during the 1980s as an enlarged derivative of the Antonov AN-124, airlifted to transport Buran-class orbiters. On 21 December 1988, the AN-225 performed its maiden flight. Only a single example was completed, although a second airframe with a slightly different configuration was partially built. After a brief period of use supporting the Soviet space program, the aircraft was mothballed during the early 1990s. In 2001, the Antonov 225 was retired from service due to a lack of funding and was left to deteriorate at the Antonov factory in Kyiv. However, in 2016, the Antonov company announced plans to restore the aircraft's two-flight status. The restoration process involved a complete overhaul of the aircraft's engines, avionics, and other systems and extensive repairs and replacements of damaged or deteriorated parts. The process took several years and involved the cooperation of a team of engineers, technicians, and other specialists. In addition to restoring the aircraft to flight status, the Antonov company also made several modifications and upgrades to the Antonov 225, including installing a new cockpit and advanced navigation and communication systems. The restoration of the Antonov 225 was a significant achievement in aviation history and demonstrated the ability of modern engineering and technology to revive and enhance historic aircraft. The Antonov 225 has since returned to service. It is used for various commercial and military applications, including transporting oversized cargo like wind turbine blades and other heavy equipment. Towards the turn of the century, it was decided to refurbish the AN-225 and reintroduce it for commercial operations, carrying oversized payloads for the operator Antonov Airlines. Multiple announcements were made regarding the potential completion of the second airframe. However, its construction has largely remained on hold due to lack of funding. By 2009, it had reportedly been brought up to 60 to 70 percent completion. With a maximum takeoff weight of 640 tons, 705 short tons, the AN-225 held several records, including the heaviest aircraft ever built and the largest wingspan of any aircraft in operational service. It was commonly used to transport objects once thought impossible to move by air, such as 130-ton generators, wind turbine blades, and diesel locomotives. Additionally, Chinese and Russian officials had announced plans to adapt the AN-225 for use in their respective space programs. The Emria routinely attracted a high degree of public interest, attaining a global following due to its size and its uniqueness. The only completed AN-225 was destroyed in the Battle of Antonov Airport during the 2022 Russian invasion of Ukraine. Original Construction of the Antonov 225 The Antonov AN-225 was a strategic airlift cargo aircraft that retained many similarities with the preceding AN-124 airlift that it was derived from. It has a longer fuselage and cargo deck due to the addition of fuselage barrel extensions fitted both fore and aft of the wings. The anhedral wings also received root extensions to increase their span. The flight control surfaces are controlled via fly-by-wire and powered by triple redundant hydraulics. Furthermore, the empennage of the AN-225 is a twin tail with an oversized, swept-back horizontal stabilizer, having been redesigned from the single vertical stabilizer of the AN-124. A twin tail arrangement enabled the aircraft to carry bulky external loads that would generate wake turbulence, disturbing the airflow around a conventional tail. The AN-225 is powered by a total of six Progress D-18T turbofan engines, two more than the AN-124, the addition of which was facilitated by the redesigned wing root area. An increased capacity landing gear system with 32 wheels was designed, some of which are steerable. These enable the airlifted to turn within a 60-meter wide, 200-foot runway. Akin to its AN-124 predecessor, the AN-225 incorporated a nose gear designed to kneel so cargo could be more easily loaded and unloaded. Additional measures to ease loading and unloading activities included the four overhead cargo cranes that could move along the whole cargo hold length, each capable of lifting up to 5,000 kilograms 
grams, 11,000 pounds. Various mounting points were present along the upper surface of the fuselage to facilitate the attachment of external loads, such as the Buran Orbiter, the AN-225's main landing gear, the nose gear of the AN-225. Unlike the AN-124, the AN-225 was not intended for tactical airlifting and was not designed for short field operations. Accordingly, the AN-225 does not have a rear cargo door or ramp, as is present on the AN-124. These features have been eliminated to save weight. The cargo hold was 1,300 M3, 46,000 cubic feet in volume, 6.4 meters, 21 feet 0 inches wide, 4.4 meters, 14 feet high, and 43.35 meters, 142 feet 3 inches long, longer than the first flight of the Wright Flyer. The cargo hold, pressurized and furnished with extensive soundproofing, could contain up to 80 standard dimension cars, 16 intermodal containers, or up to 250,000 kilograms, 551,150 pounds of general cargo. The flight deck of the AN-225 is at the front of the upper deck, accessed via a ladder from the lower deck. This flight deck is identical to the AN-124, except for additional controls to manage the different pairs of engines. To the rear of the flight deck is an array of compartments that accommodate the crew stations for the aircraft's two flight engineers, navigator, and communication specialist, along with off-duty rest areas, including beds, which facilitate long-range missions to be flown. Even when fully loaded, the AN-225 could fly non-stop across great distances, such as between New York and Los Angeles. As initially constructed, the AN-225 had a maximum gross weight of 600 tons, 660 short tons. However, between 2000 and 2001, the aircraft received numerous modifications for 20 million US dollars, such as adding a reinforced floor, which increased the maximum gross weight to 640 tons, 710 short tons. The earlier and later takeoff weights established the AN-225 as the world's heaviest aircraft, exceeding the importance of the double-check Airbus A380 airliner. Airbus claims to have improved upon the AN-225's maximum landing weight by landing an A380 at 591.7 tons, 652.2 short tons during testing. So the building of the Antonov 225 utilized various novel and sophisticated technical approaches, including using lightweight materials such as titanium and composites to lower the aircraft's total weight. The Antonov 225 has a wingspan of 88.4 meters, 290 feet, nearly as long as a football field. Six turbofan engines deployed in pairs on each wing power the Antonov 225. The engines have a combined thrust of approximately 300,000 pounds, allowing the aircraft to carry up to 250 metric tons of cargo. Main characteristics of Antonov 225 Length in meters, 84 Height in meters, 18.2 Wingspan in meters, 88.40. Wing area in square meters, 905. Flight characteristics, cruise speed, 800 kilometers per hour. Operational range, 15,400 kilometers. Operational ceilings, 9,000 meters. The destruction of Antonov 225 in Ukraine. According to the most recent reports, the aircraft's wreckage remains in Kyiv after being destroyed during a Russian bombing attack at Hostomol Airport. According to Ukrainian officials, the world's largest plane, the Antonov AN-225, was damaged during the Russian invasion of Ukraine, generating alarm and sadness in the aviation world, which occupies almost cult status. The enormous aircraft, named Emria, or Dream in Ukrainian, was parked at an airfield near Kyiv when it was attacked by Russian occupants, Ukrainian authorities said, adding that they would rebuild the plane. Russia may have destroyed our Emria, but they will never be able to destroy our dream of a strong, free, and democratic European state. We shall prevail, wrote Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmitry Kulbeya on Twitter. There has been no independent confirmation of the aircraft's destruction. A tweet from the Antonov company said it could not verify the technical condition of the plane until experts had inspected it. On Sunday, Ukrainian state defense company Ukobornprom, which manages Antonov, issued a statement saying the aircraft had been destroyed but would be rebuilt at Russia's expense. The cost it put at $3 billion. The restoration is estimated to take over $3 billion US dollars and over five years, the statement said. Our task is to ensure that these costs are covered by the Russian Federation, which has caused intentional damage to Ukraine's aviation and the air cargo sector. In a later statement, the company said the aeroplane had been undergoing maintenance on the ground near Kyiv on February 24th. According to the director of Antonov Airlines, one of the engines was dismantled for repairs, and the plane wasn't able to take off that day, although the appropriate command 
plans were given, it said. The plans for rebuilding and restoring Antonov-225. Now it looks like they have stayed true to their word, with the company announcing that plans to rebuild it are already underway. The Antonov company tweeted that the rebuild project had already begun with design work in the offing. While it had estimated repair costs, the company predicted a bill of over 500 million euros, 502 million dollars, to get it back in the air, promising more information after the victory. Already, the company has around 30% of the components needed to build a new one, it announced. Originally, Ukrainian state defense company Ukro Bornprom, which manages Antonov, had issued a statement estimating the restoration at over $3 billion, which it vowed to make Russia pay. It said the rebuild would take at least five years at the time. What is your opinion on Antonov-225? From your perspective, is it a good idea to restore Antonov-225? Please let us know in the comments section below. This concludes today's video. Make sure you've clicked the bell symbol for future videos. And if you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe. Thank you for taking the time to watch.